What's up, guys? Welcome to another video of Dev Talks with your host Travian. We talk about everything engineering and technology wise. In today's episode, we're talking about why is it so hard to get tech jobs this year in 2024 and especially software engineering jobs. And this is a video that we're reacting to from Cy Park. I believe, hopefully, I said her name correctly. Uh, she seems to have a lot of experience with working in an industry and everything like that. So we're going to just dive into this video and see what she has to say about it. I have some personal experiences in this as well, too. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Share it to all your friends and family. Without further ado, let's dive in. Hi. Today, I want to share a little bit about my thoughts on why the tech market isn't as isn't like how it used to be. I don't have too much knowledge here, but I just want to share my thoughts and hear what you guys think. Coming from a first-hand experience, I was laid off back two years ago and so were 240,000 other people. And I know that even to this day, people in tech are also being laid off. I have a few acquaintances that were laid off earlier this uh, year and in the latter half of last year who are still looking for job offers. So going back two years ago, things weren't looking great. Amazon, Facebook, Google, Apple, they were all laying off quite a number of people. And notice something real quick off the grip here. What companies does she name? And I have such a strong belief and I have friends that have the same exact belief as well too. Yes, working in fame companies can increase your career. You can make a lot of money there and all this other stuff, their benefits, all this, all these other benefits that you can get from working in fame, but fang, but it is so like, the environment is is not a safe environment at all. Mind you, you can get laid off anywhere. Mind you, <clears throat> let's put that in perspective. We're not saying it doesn't happen anywhere. But the companies she named out were fan companies. And on my personal channel, I will be talking about why I would never work for one. So if you're looking for that, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and my personal channel. I'll link it in the description because we have a lot of videos that are about to come out on that one for sure. But let's continue. And it wasn't just to the big tech companies. So were other places like Walmart, Bloomberg, GM. And things haven't been better since. Things are changing. And let's explore why. So in 2020, there was the COVID pandemic. It was a global pandemic and things had to change and for the better too. It was back then when remote work was becoming popular and it kind of had to be the only option. Remote work was basically growing worldwide and people had access to things that they didn't have before. They could work in their homes. Um, students were studying at home instead of going in class. This basically allowed companies, the big money makers, to see that human resource wasn't only limited to a single uh, regional allocation. It wasn't limited to one country, state. So when they realized this, they had an idea. The coding jobs, which require a higher base pay for those in the US, really wasn't comparable to all the lower GDP countries. So let's say India, um, Brazil, Argentina, Indonesia, South Korea, China. If a software engineer was required to get a base pay of 100K, a person with the same set of skills would be able to work in a remote country for $50,000. Then you can get two people to work work instead of that one person in the States. Since the number one goal for companies is to make more and more money, the fastest way to do so is to cut wages, is to cut people out. Then immediately you would get 100,000, 300,000, and so on. I actually saw this happen in my own company. Inside my team, we were a team of like 14 people. Initially, there were two other people laid off first. And then as I thought I had passed the initial round of layoffs, I saw more people recruited into our company, into our team. And one person was remotely working from Argentina. Back then I was thinking, huh, that's weird. I thought we were having budget cuts, so we decided to cut off people. I wonder how they managed to um, recruit other software developers. And I should have noticed then, but it was basically cutting costs and reselecting resources with a lower pay. Even the past month when I was browsing LinkedIn. This is so real. 
she is actually very real for this because it's true. If you are in the industry now, you would know how true this is. And we're not going to point fingers at any company or anything like that. I'm glad she hasn't said any company name so far, especially for her sake. It's it's great to not talk about where you were at prior and where you're working for and things. But yeah, working and you realize like a lot of companies are outsourcing now and COVID definitely showed them, hey, this is what we can get away with and we can still get work done like this. And the amount of work that you're able to get done. So that's that's very real, real for her. Everything that she said in my experiences and stuff is true to the point that I don't think I can like add much to it because that what she said is how it is, literally. Uh, not every time when companies do layoffs, it's not always about, and you would always wonder like, how are we still hiring people if they're doing layoffs and things? They're, it's it's all a game for them to still make the money that they're going to make and figure out how they're going to get more of it, be more in revenue and things like that. Because all these companies have boards that they have to uh, listen to and make sure that they're doing good so that the board members and stuff can get paid for it. So that that's so real that she actually went into... And a live example of what she went through, uh, I could talk about this, the same thing, uh, in my experiences on what you're witnessing. And some companies, mind you, they can they can still do layoffs while doing good because they just doing layoffs. It, it helps. It will help them. They're already getting a lot of work done. They're efficient. Their revenue's been increasing in the past few years and all of that. They're performing well. But they realize some positions they don't need as much or they realize, hey, we can get this done with fewer people and being in a small team. And if you're in a small enough team that's very efficient and productive, I feel like that's one of the best ways, especially if your managers try not to inflate a lot of your work going elsewhere, like so that you guys need more and you're not exhausted and it's at a healthy amount of people. And each of you guys has a business use case, what you're doing and stuff. I feel like that's the part. If you're just sitting around not doing anything all day and you're in meetings, I would more or less worry about that and the amount of work that you do. Like, look how much work you're doing. How free are you when you're working on a remote job? If you have a lot of freedom, I would question it. I would really sit there and question why you have so much availability, how big your team is. I literally started my internship in COVID, right, was it right after COVID? It was right after COVID. And the team was way bigger back then than it is now. And that's and that's not even just from layoffs. It's just how the economy was after COVID. It was insane. And I really want to talk about my experiences in these cases in my own videos, kind of like this on my personal channel. But yeah, I completely fully 100% agree with what she is saying in that manner because they will outsource the jobs to get somebody with similar skill sets or even put it at this, right? Look at your concentration on what you do. You can be a really good engineer doing a lot of busy work that keeps you off of other projects. So now... This busy work, you might not need someone like you who has all the talent and skills that you have to do this busy work that's holding you down. And if you're on a team that just only does that busy work, then the, what do you what are you really doing with your skills at that portion or at that point? You I know you want to do more development stuff and things on that regard, and they might go out and be like, hey. We need to get these other engineers from over here. They're way cheaper. They can do this work as well. It's simple enough for them to do and get it done. And then that's just how we do it from that point. So just like, just look at your workload and the work that you're doing because it will impact your career future a hundred percent. 
depending on what's going on how many people do you have under you and all of that but let's let's try to get this video done and get through it uh, i don't want to interrupt her too many more times in for other software developer jobs, I clicked on a number of companies. I noticed there were far, far, far less opportunities in the US as software developers. For companies that are rather global, if they have offices and branches, I saw that all the software jobs were all based in, in India, South America, Asia, Mexico. It was then and there that I got the goosebumps. I realized, oh wow, now Technology isn't about the skills anymore. It's really affordability because you'd be able to find a number of people who can do quite a similar thing. And as software developers, you don't know everything in your head. You have to always learn on the job and you're also utilizing a lot of um, Google, a lot of Stack Overflow, and they can do stuff when trained. I've heard of cases where a lot of companies are building in-branch offices outside of the States and recruiting more people in those remote offices. So yeah, I see a lot of tech jobs being relocated outside and elsewhere. And the second reason why is of course the AI boom. I guess we all kind of knew this was coming and I bet even software developers, they knew this very well themselves. I remember, I think it was back in college when I was talking with my classmates if we're Googling how to code, why can't, why can't VS Code itself code, you know? And yeah, that has come into reality. When the ChatGPT came out, all the developers, even my manager, were telling me, now things are changing. All the simple jobs, all the repetitive coding now be replaceable with AI. I never felt it to my skins back then, but yes, it's scary. We've all seen this coming, but I guess we never realized it would be on us this soon. Even at my current work, I see robots replacing four or five people's work because the This is slightly a stretch, but this also goes to our point about all this repetitive work. And I, I literally just said this, somebody else with other different skill sets can take up this work and just easily do it if they're trained the right way. This is another thing where somebody who's not as skilled as you may be can use ai now as a benefit to do a lot of this busy work this repetitive work and this work that's not too difficult to manage and whatnot so this like yeah she's talking about it i, I literally just went through this ai makes it easier for lower end engineering people to do work just to complete the work like i just did a video that i posted today that i'm recording this video on how ai is replacing teachers and i talked about how we need to take this mindset of hey letting ai replace people entirely to working with it as a good enough tool to be more efficient in our work so that yeah our teams could possibly be smaller but they can still be able to afford us because they're not hiring 50 of us on a team having 10 of us they can do the work with five or six of us in the u.s and with a lot smaller of a team and still get the stuff done at a the at a real necessary rate and whatnot so ai definitely is going to help a lot of those other people get the work done necessary right there but it it can't fully take over an engineer because if i give AI a prompt. One, there's two things about it. A lot of companies have some security reasons and stuff that, hey, we need to figure out what open AI in like ChatGPT, for example, is going to store in them so that they don't have company stuff inside. And then two, it needs to, the AI isn't testing itself. If you take somebody and just puts in whatever that the AI responded back to them, it's, it's going to break. Like, you're not going to get something that's 100% right. It's probably not even tested correctly yet. And a bunch of other things across the board. So a trained mind definitely needs to work with it to be able to get something that's going to work it properly and maintain it. And then how do we continue this process so somebody else who comes in behind me can do it? So it's all of that. I don't think... Engineers are going to get replaced, though.
The net return on those investments of robots were rather better than human work. I see myself utilizing ChatGPT from making simple coding changes or simple queries and even when writing emails too. So since AI has the knowledge, AI has the skills for simple repetitive tasks, just imagine how profound work that it may be able to do in the future. So things are changing and every day I'm wondering what am I gonna do to live? I've been seeking out ways and I've been contemplating should I seek healthcare jobs or should I just keep on going or should I? All right, so if you like this video, go give it a like. I'll link it in the description. Also subscribe to our channel if you like her videos. But yeah, that's how it is. I, even though it's in front of us, I don't think engineers as uh, a whole front will be getting replaced. I think it's, there was an influx of us definitely on a lot of teams, especially from COVID and whatnot. There's definitely huge influx of us, but we, with the right number of us on a team, and if we work efficient enough, we're doing what we have to do. Um, also our salaries come into account as well. There's a lot of companies that pay us a lot of money, a lot, a lot. So I see us getting replaced because of how much we, how expensive we definitely are, but there are ways around this. I know it's wish, wishful thinking, but if we were fully going to get replaced, everybody would have gotten replaced. And there's a lot of companies to go work for. You don't always have to work for Fang. Your, your job doesn't always have to be tied around there. And then how are you going to move up from your career? Are you going to stay an engineer your whole life and be coding your whole life? Like, what are you doing as far as those aspects go? But I definitely don't trust AI to 100% replace an engineer. And all those people who are coming in to replace those roles in different countries, those folks are still needing to get trained. And that takes time for everything to get picked up so if you like this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe and share it with your friends i really appreciate it it helps me out and the channel out a lot make sure you definitely comment i want to engage with everybody down below and then if you want to see more just look at these videos that pops up right now and see you peace